bone, joint, and muscle injuries that can happen without warning. That's why UPMC Orthopedic Care provides convenient walk-in access at our injury clinics throughout the region. No appointments are needed, just walk in for expert evaluation and exceptional care by our team of orthopedic specialists. Clinics are located in Carlisle, Lidditz, Harrisburg, and Enola. For directions and hours, or to learn more, visit upmc.com slash injury clinic. Welcome, welcome everyone to another edition of the Pennsylvania High School Football Report Podcast. I'm Brian Linder. I'm here with Evan Wheaton this week. No, I'm here, Vaughn. Feeling a little under the weather. Which, I think uh, I think Rymir is just hiding from you. He, he doesn't want to line up. I, I, since I tried to get him to play EA college sports football, you know he uh, college football. He he he's he's been a no show, Evan. I don't know what's going on. That's him it. Him and Dan. Man. Him and Dan. You know, I beat Dan in double overtime last week, and you know I try to tell him I'll bring I'll bring my team anywhere, anytime, play anybody. Have you played Rymir yet? I haven't. Ever since uh, you know, he's saying he'll play me any time, and then he doesn't show up, Evan. He said uh, Dan doesn't want the smoke from you. No, looks like he doesn't want the smoke. Yeah, I mean, What's going Dan, on? Dan did play me last week. He took the L. He did play a good game. It was double overtime, so I'll give him some props. Can't win them all. Yeah. But, you know, he had Southern Cal. I had Kansas. Took him out. What was, the, uh, what was the final on that one? Like 42-41 or something like that, double overtime. So it was a thriller, okay. I mean, you know, I had to let him get a little. If you if you beat Dan too bad, he'll he'll quit playing you. So, I, I mean, he he like quit playing because he was beating you too much, and then you uh, reeled him back in and and got the dub. I don't know about that, Evan. Uh, I don't know about all that. How about you? How are you feeling this week? Uh, I'm not feeling under the weather, so that's good. Well, you better be careful out there. It seems like everybody's going out and getting sick right now. Well, flu season's uh coming up on us soon so yeah. gotta gotta keep the wits about you keep that in mind as you folks go out to these high school football games and whatnot uh you know get your vitamin c and boost your immune system going out you know covid's still out there too evan you don't want to get covid we still don't know anything about covid really yeah uh, you don't want to you don't want to get covid so how about you know i was before we get into the high school football i was looking around the nfl this week and had some guys from Pennsylvania. Micah Parsons had a really good game for the Cowboys, and they were kind of pumping him up. And told ESPN talking about how they, the Cowboys should sign him to his uh, his deal now that they got Dak and CD done. Um, but he had a really big game. Um, the Cowboys beat up the Browns pretty good. Um, anybody, anything stick out from the NFL weekend in your mind? My Patriots like somehow found a way to get it done, man. Pretty crazy. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I I did not see have the Patriots winning on my uh. My don't card think, uh, don't think uh many people did, but um, you know, nice uh, little start to the Rod Mayo era. Not good news. Kind of sidebar is that I guess Christian Barmore, a really good defensive tackle from here in Pennsylvania, plays for the Patriots, signed a big deal with him in the all season. Heck of a player. Um, played at Newman Gretti. I think he's been dealing with some blood clots, Evan. Yeah. So, and I was reading he might not even be able to play this year. Right? Yeah. Is what they're afraid of, which would be terrible because, again, he's been, he's what, a second round pick? And he, you know, came in with some people questioning him, and he's been a really excellent player for the Patriots. Yeah. The defense has been a, a bright spot in the last couple of years. Um, and he's been a part of that. Um, I mean, you know, if it's not one thing, it's the other, right? Like last year, week four with Dallas Cowboys, you lose, you know, Matt Judon and Christian Gonzalez in the same game for the whole season. So, you know, it's not one thing, it's the other when it rains, it pours. So we'll see, uh, you know. I'll say too, people uh, here in Central PA, football fans, um, you look, Chase Edmonds, running back, who I believe was with the Buccaneers again this year, um, he's on injured reserve. He, he played at CD East. He has one of the better stories, Evan. Not the biggest guy. You ever meet Chase Evans? Good guy, but he's not the biggest dude. Wasn't heavily recruited. Ended up going to Fordham out of CD East. Uh, made a run, I think, at being like the FCS all-time leading ru- rusher or Division Two or whatever division they're in. Um, skates me at the moment. 
uh, or the conference. Uh, he had a really great career there. He ended up being like a fourth round pick of the Cardinals. Had some some pretty good seasons with them. Time with the Dolphins. It kind of bounced around between the the Bengals and the Bucks. Now he, I mean, not the Bengals, the uh, Broncos and the Bucks. He's had some injury issues. Um, but I would never count that dude out. His story is kind of amazing how he made it, what he's been able to do with his career. Well, now I have a lot of offers and stuff. When I hear Chase Edmonds, man, my in CDs, my mind goes straight to Jared Porter, you know? Yeah. I mean, he entered his uh, senior year chasing those uh, school records held by Chase Edmonds. So, you know, it's it's cool to see so where today's high school kids end up as, you know, tomorrow's uh, tomorrow's NFL, you know? Yeah, and we talk about Jared Porter real quick. You know, um, unfortunately, he's he's had a since the first game. You know, his ankle's been banged up, but CD East is now three and zero, and I think they found something with him out. So if they can get him back, you know, because they got uh, I say found something with him out. Um, Leon Parsons has, has done really well for Leon Parson, not Parsons, Parson, not Parsons. Parsons. Yeah, um, has Parson. done. Really- done really well for them evan um i think he had like 140 yards against uh against uh peter cliff there um so i don't know i mean we're seeing some stuff like that around around central pennsylvania and around the state uh you know you 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 went to a couple interesting games last week Uh, i know you were at that uh harrisburg state college game saturday too right yeah i was uh i was there uh, with uh, Eric Epler. Um, that one, you know, it was kind of a wacky one, uh, uh, but it was a fun one. It was um, really just dominated by defense. Um, I think there was, what, like three fumbles in that game, all recovered by the other team, you know, combined. Um, Harrisburg was able to put together a, a drive in like the final minute, I want to say it was, before halftime, where Sia Mickens caught a 28-yard touchdown pass from John Lewis. Um John Lewis is playing with confidence, man. He like I think he's got it. Um he looks like a starting quarterback in the uh in the mid pen. Um from State College's side, you know, they're able to move the ball here and there, but again the the turnover bug, um a lot of fourth down stops, Ben don't break defense. Um the, but but obviously story of that game, the end there, blocked field goal. Uh, I think State College had the right idea. You know, it's seven six. They're going down, bleeding the clock as they put together this like methodical drive. You know, if you can get a touchdown, great. But try to kick that field goal. It looked like Elias Coke got his fingers on the ball on the block, um, and then you know that was it. You get the uh, State College had one more chance, but uh, interception kind of stopped that. So. It was pretty exciting right down to the last play. Um, 7-6, I, I don't think that's the – I'm not surprised by the result of the game, but I think the final score uh, might have surprised some folks, just how defensive it was. Yeah, so we kind of talked about that maybe giving us more of an idea about the 6A landscape, and I don't know that it does because I think either one of those teams could win on any given day. But for Harrisburg, you continue to look at the bright side of this. is They didn't have Kevin Brown. You think that they hopefully will get him back at some point in the season. That's the state number one junior, really um, big offensive lineman, Penn State commit. They're still just still kind of putting things together after losing Sean Lee to pit commit at quarterback. I will say I think John Lewis stepping in there has some of the sort of same skill sets as, as Sean Lee. He can he can run when he takes off. He's really fast, Evan. He's got a burst. Um, and he could sling it out there a little bit. He throws a nice spiral, and he can get it down the field a little bit uh, for not being such a big guy. I think he's like 5'9 or 5'10. Um, now, Sean Lee was a little bit bigger, probably a little bit faster, a little bit better passer, but he's kind of like a four-man's <laughs> Sean Lee um, filling, filling that aspect in our offense. I uh, One notable thing, um, not to get off track with um... – John Lewis, but I, you know, one thing I want to point out is kind of saw Deontay Sheffy return to the uh, backfield, getting some touches there on offense. Obviously, he's been dealing with a hand injury, and he's been still kind of key on defense. But you know, making his return after um, uh, being held out of the backfield against uh, McDevitt 
uh, we got to see him kind of getting back into form there in the backfield, which I think is pretty promising. You add a guy like that back to your rotation with uh, Nehemiah Ewell and uh, Messiah Mickens, you know, you can get that three-headed dragon of a, a running back room back maybe. Yeah, yeah. So things looking up for Harrisburg, not too down on State College. I'll be very interested the uh, State College and Bishop McDevitt play. I think that would be a very interesting game. Yeah, for sure. I think uh, State College, I believe, plays uh, Cumberland Valley this uh, Friday, that, I think. I mean, that won't be easy for them. I mean, I would pick State College to win that game, but Cumberland Valley, uh, we know it's going to be scrappy with them. So. Yeah, I was at, um, I was at their, last, uh, their last matchup. That was uh, the goal line fumble recovery from Alex Suave that I've spoken at length about. That was, uh, now, you know, if, if this is uh, anything like that one, then it'll be a good game for sure. Yeah, um, you know, looking around the mid pen, Evan, I think we're and, and we're going to get to some statewide stuff here, but I think we're starting to get a feel. Anything surprise you so far through the first three weeks? Anything sticking out in your mind that, that, that maybe you didn't expect? I'm not, well, I'm not sure if surprise is the right word, but I think it's pretty cool seeing like, you know, Mechanicsburg, Shippensburg, Lower Dauphin in that kind of a divisional race with the Keystone. Um, obviously it's Friday, uh, you're going to be looking at lower dolphin at Mechanicsburg, um, two really good receivers on those two teams. Of course, uh, lower dolphin has been mixing it up a little bit, the quarterback position with Braden Heckard, um, and, uh, Carter Burton. Uh, and then of course you have that, uh, connection with, uh, Eli Raider and, uh, Josh Smith for Mechanicsburg. Um, that's one of, I think several marquee games to be looking out for here this, uh, Friday night, but. Um, I, I think the Keystone race is pretty uh, compelling, you know. Uh, that was a very um, momentous win that Northern was coming off of against Mifflin County and uh, Lower Dolphin taking them out, not really getting too complacent no matter how far ahead they were. They saw what they were capable of the week prior. Um, I think the, key, uh, the Keystone race heating up is, uh, is pretty compelling for sure. Yeah, and those are teams that um, we don't, you know, aren't usually – pumped up out there like uh Harrisburg and Bishop McDevitt. Look, Harrisburg, Bishop McDevitt, State College, those kind of teams, they earned that. I had a discussion with a coach one time, Evan. I mean, they earned that. I mean, they're in the state title picture sort of every year right now. Um they earned their their keep there. Um but I, I agree with you there. Those are teams that you don't really hear a lot of and then you have that uh your Braden um his name just gave me the wide receiver for Lower Dolphin who did so well. Uh, he's a good player. And then Josh Smith, I think, is a is an under-the-radar sort of – he's got some college offers, but I think he's a good playmaker for them. Like I said, Eli Ryder's been playing really good at quarterback, too. He threw for over 2,000 yards last year. Um, he was on our – we put him on our Tremendous 22 team, uh, which is our weekly all-star team. Um, regardless of position, we take the 22 top performances from around the state. They threw for 256 and five touchdowns against Mifflin County. Um, so – uh, that is a that is a good game to be looking forward. And I, I'll go back to CD East real quick too. We know they're not playing with their best player, and they're three and zero with a big win over Cedar Cliff. I'm interested to see them in this. Uh, you know, they get overlooked in that mid pin Commonwealth too, Evan, and and they're in there. And and now let's see if they can get Jared Porter back, and and what they might could do uh, against against some of these uh, big boys in Harrisburg or State College or Bishop McDevitt. And it, you know, and one last thing on the Keystone, just uh, it isn't just uh, you know Bishop McDevitt moving on out of there either. It was a really good Cedar Cliff program as well. So just you know that divisional race just seems just totally open up for grabs between uh, all those guys, Lower Dolphin, Mechanicsburg, and uh, Shippensburg. You know, so I mean that's the last thing I'll say on that. It's 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 a really compelling divisional race over there with those guys. Bone, joint, and muscle injuries, they can happen without warning. That's why UPMC Orthopedic Care provides convenient walk-in access at our injury clinics throughout the region. No appointments are needed, just walk in for expert evaluation and exceptional care by our team of orthopedic specialists. Clinics are located in Carlisle, Lidditz, Harrisburg, and Enola. For directions and hours, or to learn more, visit upmc.com slash injury clinic. Looking at the statewide slate, um, Evan, first of all, 
your 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 guy Matt Zollers in spring four take another loss. They're struggling, man. They, you know, I know they lost some good weapons around him last year, right? Yeah, uh, Mason Scott, if he graduated, they, uh, you know, a uh, pack track star, great receiver for those guys. You know, uh, he's not there anymore. I watched the, uh, I went back and watched the final drive of that uh, game. Um, you know, it looked like uh, they were moving the ball there on that two minute drill. Matt Zolich was able, uh, being able to pick up those first downs with his legs. Obviously, he's been one of those uh, dual mobile threat quarterbacks. Uh, it looked like I don't even know what happened. I tried watching it a couple of times. It looked like the something with center snapping the ball. Like I don't know if the ball like got stuck in the turf or something, or if it like hit his leg or what. But like what you know, we were watching it live on the Friday night show that Austin and I do the Pin Zone show on um, Ten Live. So you guys haven't watched that, tune in. But it it, it like got stuck in the turf. Yeah, I I mean, I don't know how that happens. Um, but I'll tell you what, you know, 17-14 result, Downingtown and East, like both the Downingtowns have been really great over there in District 1. And obviously, Springford now has Downingtown West coming on up. Um, you know, they play, you know, the Pioneer Athletic Conference, they play those four uh, non-conference non-league matchups to start the year before you get into Pack Liberty play, Pack Frontier play. Um, they have a you know, pretty loaded non-conference schedule. They try to find those types of opponents to, you know, they got blown out by Easton the week before that. Um, you know, now this time it's a three-point loss that came down to a crazy situation there with trying to snap the ball uh, on a potential game-winning drive there. I mean. You know, getting those types of uh, matchups and opponents in non-conference before hitting that league slate. Um, you know, Perky Yeoman Valley does the same thing. Pope John Paul, a lot of those pack schools that try to find those tough opponents before they dive into league play. You know, I know a lot of teams do that, but certainly that's a, a big practice out there in District 1. Yeah, so I was looking down, uh, like I said, we do this tremendous 22 type team every week. Um, and another a lot of good pro- there's one guy who's not on there who I wanted to bring up. Uh, his team lost last week, but he had another huge game. Was Matt Bodner, the quarterback for Notre Dame Green Pond? They're having some ridiculous games right now. He th- he's got 1,280 yards passing on the season. Um, and uh, I think he threw for another like 400 yards or something like that last, last week, and they lost by like one. I'm going to pull it up here while we're talking. Um, but he, according to Max Preps right now, and again, that's one of my critiques of Pennsylvania and why I say well, for all the great football in Pennsylvania, we're not a serious football state, is the PIAA doesn't mandate and the coaches don't care to report all of the stats, so we don't know who's who really. But, yeah, Bodner threw for 363 yards, three touchdowns, and he lost 31-29. Uh, <laughs> So and he had a ridiculous game against Garden Spot to start the year, but he's at the top of the match press list with 1,280 yards passing. But I'll tell you another guy who made that tremendous 22, Evan, and Bodner actually didn't make it this week by that performance, uh, is uh, is um, T.D. Evans, Torrance Evans, um, from um, this kind of township. And, uh, you know, he's he's having a heck of a year. 413 yards and five touchdowns on the 61-10 win over Boiling Springs. He's got over 900 yards on a year. We thought they'd be pretty good at Susquehanna Township offensively, Evan. What, what do you think about that? Yeah, uh, I'm still waiting to get out to a Susquehanna Township game myself, man. Uh, I want to see, I want to see uh, Torin and uh, that Lex Cyrus connection uh, myself. Um, I think general consensus is we, I think we all here, um, kind of expect or firmly believe to see uh, this this uh, Susquehanna Township team in the District 3-4-A title game, um, you know, with Bishop McDevitt moving up and then them only getting better over there at Susquehanna Township. I think, you know, they're in for some big stuff. Uh, pretty uh, marquee matchup with uh, West Perry and on up there. Um, uh, you know, they're an exciting group. They're just such an exciting group. Had a couple of uh, mid Penn quarterbacks there. You know, Drew Brandstetter joined them. Or from uh, Camp Hill on the tremendous twenty-two. It's a hard list to make. 
And there's a lot of quarterbacks out there statewide who put up those types of numbers, but you're seeing that consistency from uh, Drew Branstetter and obviously a huge, huge outing from Torrin Evans. Yeah. So for people to not know, Camp Hill runs the uh, air raid offense, and they have Alex Long, who's a big receiver, uh, who should be getting some college looks, three six four type kid. Long, he can go and catch it. Noah Doy, who's not the biggest guy, but he's quick, and he's just a good ball player on both sides of the ball for Camp Hill. Back to Susquehanna Township real quick, though. They have Lex Cyrus, as Evan said, who's the South Carolina commit. Um, and then they have uh, Jarrett Kern, the other wide receiver, I think called like four touchdowns, three or four touchdowns last week uh, against Boiling Springs. He's a college uh, kind of prospect. So that's a really nice offense with some really good pieces at Susquehanna Township. If you want to get out and check some, check out some teams. And again, the air raid offense is always fun to watch with Camp Hill. Um, and when they play, there's going to be some points scored, uh, sometimes for both teams. But <laughs> um, hey, there's another guy on the list. I think you saw play some Elijah Jordan, the quarterback from Jersey Shore. This yeah, week. <clears throat> yeah, he's one of those uh, one of those high school athletes where I'm like, man, he's still in high school. And then I remember like, oh well, it is only my fourth year living in Pennsylvania. But yeah, I used to cover Jersey Shore um, when I first moved to Pennsylvania, and I was working at Williamsburg Sun Gazette. Jersey Shore, man, um, they've been one of the heavy hitters uh, in the state for a while now. They were in the state final the year before I moved here. Uh, they've been trying to get back there since. Um, Elijah Jordan, man, uh, 385 yards, 294 passing, 91 rushing, uh, five touchdowns against Sealands Grove, 55-21 win. Uh, the you know Jersey Shore winning that game doesn't surprise me. I think the margin of victory against a team like Sealands Grove uh, kind of surprises me. Um, like, for listeners here, folks who, you know, don't follow District 4 football too, too much, um, like, Sealands Grove is, like, the only one of, if not the only, District 4 team that's really been able to consistently play Jersey Shore competitively year after year after year. Um, for Jersey Shore to, to win that game by the margin that they did, um, you know, we'll, we'll see. But uh, I'll have to reach out to some contacts out there and see what's going on. But, um, yeah, Jersey Shore is always in it. Uh, super, super compelling to to see that result. I thought that was pretty notable. Yeah, you know, also another guy that made the list again this week, Peyton Falzoni, the quarterback from Nazareth, uh, 332 yards, 250 passing, 76 rushing, five touchdowns and a 35-31 win over Wilson. That's a good win. Anytime you can beat Wilson, that's good. A great, solid program. Uh, coming coming out of the LL League there, um, and Falzoni is a and I you know looking now I screwed his name up on our uh, on our list here I got Tate Yon Falzoni so you know I do proofread but I just called it error for myself but Peyton Falzoni calling myself out Evan I'm owning it I'm gonna get it fixed uh. Five touchdowns and a win over Wilson. He's, I think, a Virginia Tech commit, Evan. And um, he's been one of the more consistent quarterbacks in the state. I think he's like a 6'5", 200-pound kid. You know, uh, I think he's a really good football player, man. I guess uh, just on the beat of quarterbacks, well, uh, I'm probably going to butcher his last name, but uh, Tanner Boofer, <laughs> Bethel Park, Pfeiffer, yeah. Boofer. I don't know. I'm I'm butchering it. But, um. You know, 326 yards, four touchdowns, 46-7 win over Armstrong. Um, Bethel Park quarterback, um, you know, got a good amount of quarterbacks on this tremendous 22. Again, it's a, it's a hard list to make on any given week. It is. You know, another kid I'll mention, Braxton Browns up there, Columbia Montour Votech. He had 401 rushing yards on the max preps list. He's, he's, he's leading the state. Um, and, uh, you know, he's not a name that's, Seeing a lot of recruiting lists and stuff like that, but he's off to a really good start there. Um, Alex Tash, I want to bring him up, Evan, uh, for Latrobe. He's a Penn State commit at linebacker. But he's been running the football for uh, Latrobe, and he had uh, 251 yards and four touchdowns and a 42 28 win over Norman. So, you Penn State people, you know, you probably get to see some fun film of a linebacker uh, running, running up and down the football field as a running back for you. Um, if you want to check that out to pull up his huddle. So yeah, good, uh, good season here for, uh, Penn state recruits. We we're just talking about, uh, Messiah Mickens, another Penn state recruit, how 
he's been kind of pivotal on on uh, this Harrisburg defense to kind of backtrack back to Harrisburg, just you know, off the beat of Penn State. Uh, you know, a lot of people see how he can, what he can do on offense. Um, certainly in this past game, being the difference maker with uh, Jayon Lewis, but and you know, had a couple of sacks in that LaSalle game. People might not remember that and kind of just think of the final score there, but you know. In a game like uh, against State College, too, you know, where defense ruled, you kind of see that as well. So Penn State getting a good one there. You know, I didn't check in on LaSalle this week, but you you look. Or I didn't see their, their numbers pop up, but you look and at the quarterbacks across the state. Expected Zoller should be pretty good. He's the top-ranked guy. This team's struggling a little bit. Peyton Falzoni's been really good at Nazareth. I think Stone Saunders has been pretty good at Bishop McDevitt. Uh, but I might put Falzoni out there a little bit. And then, um, you know, some much Beals at Roman Catholic has been really good. Um, and so I think you got some interesting stuff, interesting um, kind of quarterback situations there where you look and say, oh, these quarterbacks are really actually playing pretty well. Oh, sorry about that. Looking at max preps. Um, yeah. Uh, Gavin Sidwar, too. It's kind of right Gavin up there, Sidwar. too. Uh, Rutgers commit. Um, that's, what, that's, what, that's where I was going with LaSalle. Gavin Sidborn, Peyton Falzoni, to me, right now, might be at the top of the list for your statewide quarterback performance overall through the first three weeks. Yeah. Um, definitely, definitely convincing a 3 0 there for uh, Sal. You know, the wins aren't a quarterback stat, but he's been playing very, very well. Yeah. I got a little off track there. I'm glad you brought me back to Gavin Sidborn because that's where I was going with the uh, LaSalle College thing, man. So, yeah, he. Him, I've been really impressed with he, he and uh, Peyton Fowles only. So as far as, far as like you're, you know, kind of like your blue blood quarterbacks, guys who've got these big college offers or whatever, or, or commitment, I think those two have been maybe the best. I think Stone's been pretty good. Um, and I think, I think Matt, I don't think it's all Matt's fault. Um, I think uh, Springford obviously did lose a lot around him. So, yeah, well, he uh, put him in a position to, Got a game-winning drive there, you know. He was he was moving, putting them right in a position to win that thing, and you know it, it looked like uh, all hell broke loose at the very last second. Is what it looked like. So, yeah, I'm sure they'll be uh, they'll be all right. It's non-conference. They're getting the lumps early. That's what they do. Um, I know. Big thing over there is that you know Spring Ford, Perky, Omen Valley. They're just on that quest to you know, break through District 1, you know. A couple of years ago, Perkium and Valley um, facing uh, Central Buck South, they came within one point of reaching their first uh, District 1 6 hay final, came down to a, a, a botched uh, PAT, and that came back to uh, make all the difference. So, you know, both of them, they have their little rivalry that, um, you know, it's like the regular season Super Bowl, like, um, like that that conference's version of like Harrisburg and McDevitt, you know? And, uh, but they both are trying to, you know, unlike Harrisburg and McDevitt, they're both still trying to break through that district field down there. So, you know, that's one thing that you, you kind of think about Spring Ford, uh, Perky Omen Valley. That's, that comes front of mind for me. And I will say too, we don't have this very often, but on this week's Tremendous 22, which is our top, you guys go to Penn Live, you'll see it's our top 22 performances from around the state. You can also go vote for the top player performance in the state from last week. We run that poll from usually Monday mornings till Wednesday at noon. Um, and that had 180 performances on it. Braden McCarthy, the running back from Blackhawk, Black Hawk, who ran for 118 yards and two touchdowns, and also called a 26 yard touchdown pass last week. He won that this week. So we'll be getting in touch with Braden. He's going to get a shirt. Player of the Week shirt, courtesy of Hummelstown Print House. Um, so we're three deep on that. But we had a kicker make it, Peter Nataro from North Allegheny. He's an Alabama commit, actually. But he he booted field goals of 53, 52, and 30 yards in an 18-14 win over Penn Hills. You hit two 50-yarders in a game as a kicker, you're probably going to make it. Uh, that's In high school, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, I was going to say, at high school level, um, Bang a field goals like that, you know, that's that's certainly eye opening. Obviously, going to going to that school for a reason there. Yeah. Dave and Peel, the quarterback for West West uh, Western Beaver, finished second in that uh, player of the week voting this week. Uh, he had a really good week too. I think he threw for over three four hundred yards and made our uh, 
over 300 yards and made our tremendous 22-2. And uh, Tanny Young, the wide receiver from CD East, was third in that. He's had a really sneaky start to the season. He's been good for CD East. They transferred over from Trinity when Jordan Hill left uh, to go coach at uh, Penn State, but he's been really good, Evan. Yeah, I think uh, kind of fits like just going under the radar there. Like I think that's just how a lot of it is as CD East, just floating under the radar and then opening up some eyes, widening some eyes, you know. It's just kind of what CD East does. Obviously, no, you know, folks know Jared Porter, but there's a lot of those guys that, you know, float under the radar and they kind of surprise you. You know, last year they gave Harrisburg a game um, and, you know, they, they had a pretty close one with uh, Cedar Cliff. So, um, you know, those guys just float under the radar and they kind of get you. So there you go, folks. We gave you some names, some kids who've been doing some big stuff uh, across, you know, the last week or so. And really, a lot of these names have been really good so far the first three weeks of the season. Um, Evan, did you say that uh, Hannah, Susquehanna Township and West Perry were playing this week? I believe so. We have a pretty good slate. I'll um, we got we got a couple of marquee matchups. Yeah, Susquehanna Township at West Perry. Um, you have uh, West State Prince College at Cumberland Valley. That's correct. Um, so yeah, and then of course we had mentioned Lower Dolphin at Mechanicsburg. So those are three right off the bat that kind of jump out. West Perry has Brad Hockenberry running back. I did a story him last week. He's averaging uh, he was averaging twenty nine yards a carry. Yeah, at, that's last week. Now he's now he's only down to eighteen yards a carry, but he's still only eighteen yards still per carry. Like Seventy five yards last week. So. Only eighteen yards per carry. Ugh. Could be some fireworks in that game with them and Hannah. So that'd be a fun. Yeah. Anyway, hey, before we go, did you see this play over the weekend in the Woodland Hills um, Central Catholic game? Was that the one where it was like a? Uh, celebrate too early, uh, yeah. crossing the plane, and then it got picked up and returned all the way. If you guys you guys can look at like Ross Tucker tweeted out, I retweeted it. Craziest play you'll ever see, probably the play of the year. Uh, quarterback for uh, Woodland Hills gets sacked. He fumbles. Central Catholic picks it up. Poor kid. I feel bad for him. Uh, uh, yeah. Hey, kids, you got to learn. He can't celebrate too early. He goes to running in from like the 10, Evan. He scoops it up about the 10. Gets to like the six inch line and drops the ball, yeah. celebrating. And the kid from Willen Hills, DJ Dutrell, picks it up. That he he did all the way back. Yeah, it rolled into the end zone. And the kid, <laughs> DJ Dutrell for Willen Hills, realizes that he didn't cross. So he picks it up and just takes off running. Everybody's kind of like standing around watching him until the end when they realize what was going on. And he ran it back. I mean, from, from the end zone, in, in his own end zone, all the way back. It was over I mean, 100 yard run. For a touchdown, it was kind of crazy. And look, you feel bad for the Central Catholic kid because you know he was just a young kid. And I don't yeah. feel as bad for kids in college or in, and 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 the, or guys in the pros who celebrate too early. I think they're kind of doofuses. Uh, you know, you gotta, yeah, you, you gotta have this happen now in high school, and then just remember, man, you you gotta you gotta yeah. get through the play first because not even half a second more, you yeah. probably would have gotten that touchdown. I don't feel bad for the pros. I feel bad for the for the young guys who like, you know, who knows? I don't know how many touchdowns that kid scored in his life, but you know, yeah. and he's celebrating a big play and and then, but hey, good for DJ Dutrell. He got he gets to be, you know, m- probably the player of the year in the state if I had to pick one. I, I don't know how you're going to beat that. We'll see. That, be a long season ahead of us. So that's yeah, that's got to be the play of the uh, of the uh, season so far. Um, but we're only heading into week four now, so Lord knows what uh what's to come. Well, Evan, I think we had a podcast. We're only contractually obligated to go 30 minutes. We've gone 33. We didn't really have a script. We just said, let's talk about some some mid-pin stuff and kind of give some people, you know, the Iggy on some statewide guys and who are maybe showing out a little bit. Um, and Ramir, you know, he he's hiding, man. He's hiding from us. Yeah. So I think we got a podcast. I'll tell everybody, penlove.com. We got a lot of content there. Make sure you check that out. Make sure you're voting on these players of the week, uh, especially statewide. Get your, get your kid a shirt. And if you don't have your kid in there, you got to make sure you get them to me by Sunday at 9 a.m. Uh, Evan, tell them how to find you on social media. Evan Wheaton on X or Twitter. 
I like Twitter, but either or. Yep, and I'm at Sports by B. Linder on Twitter. Uh, and yes, or X, you can find us there. And like I said, check us out on penlab.com. Until next week, Kevin, we'll see you on them. Bone, joint, and muscle injuries, they can happen without warning. That's why UPMC Orthopedic Care provides convenient walk-in access at our injury clinics throughout the region. No appointments are needed, just walk in for expert evaluation and exceptional care by our team of orthopedic specialists. Clinics are located in Carlisle, Lidditz, Harrisburg, and Enola. For directions and hours or to learn more, visit upmc.com slash injury clinic.